In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us to our Bible study tonight. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. And thank you because you have brought us in for a good thing. I will pray that the good thing you want to do, you will do it in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. There will be no exception tonight. You bless everyone. We well, thank you for our newcomers. We well, thank you for the way they have turned up in large number. We we'll pray, Lord, that none of them will go back empty-handed in Jesus' name. And our brothers, our leaders, our members, our workers, our leaders, pastors, everyone, everyone here tonight, touch every life. And help us to look in the right direction. That your blessing will not pass us by. Open our understanding to your word tonight. In Jesus' name, I pray. God bless you. You can see that. I welcome every one of you to the Bible study tonight. In Jesus' name. Wonderful to be at Ajigula again. This is a place to be on Monday night. And for those who are coming for the first time, we rejoice that you are here tonight. And what the Lord does tonight will be a foretaste of what God will continue to do in your life. I want to encourage you to keep on coming. And as you keep on coming, the blessings of the Lord will overflow in your life in Jesus' name. As a church, we study our Bible. We go from one book of the Bible to another. And we go from chapter to chapter and verse to verse. Tonight, we're continuing our study in the second epistle of John. And we're looking at second John. It has only one chapter. And as you read from verse 1, he's talking about the truth of the word of God. Look at verse 1. It says, to the elder, unto the elect lady and her children. And he says, my love in the truth. And not only I, not I only, but also all they that have, that have known the truth. It says, for the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us. And shall be with us how long? Forever. Grace be with you. Mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father in truth and love. I rejoice greatly that I found of your children, thy children walking in the truth. As we have received a commandment from the Lord. You'll find that uh, the Apostle John spoke much about the truth. And in this uh, brief episode, he itemizes the truth. He emphasizes the truth. He allies the truth. He upholds the truth. And he brings the truth and presents the truth unto us. The truth that saves the truth that converts, the truth that changes life, the truth that transforms life. And he wants us to understand that that truth is essential, that that truth is indispensable. It's not just truth as a notion. It's not true that you just keep in the mind or keep in the head without doing something in your life. It is the truth that comes into you and then begins to work effectively and effectually. Number one, it convicts you. You hear the truth, you compare that with your life, and you see that you actually need to have this truth interpreted into your life, translated into your life, and reflected in your life. It brings, number one, conviction. Number two, it brings confession. That's why you go to the Lord and say, Lord, I don't match up. I'm not like I, I ought to be because I see the truth. And the truth is telling me that I am not what I ought to be. It brings conviction. It brings confession. It brings conversion. And it is the truth that comes to your life. And then as you pray, turning away from your sin, repenting of your sin, believing of the Lord Jesus Christ, there is conversion. And this truth then begins to comfort you, begins to control you, begins to direct you in life. And he says, this is the way to go. And that is the way to go. And then apart from his convicting you, apart from his bringing you to confession, apart from his converting you, apart from the very fact that it is making you conform to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ, it cleanses, it purifies, 
It sanctifies because we are cleansed by the truth. Ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. And it says sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. This word also, this truth brings a real power into our lives. It empowers us. Knowledge brings power. Knowledge brings boldness. Knowledge brings courage. It empowers us. It enables us. And it establishes us. And then it makes us enduring. Because Jesus said that in the last days, many will lose their love. They lose their first love. And the love of many will wax cold. But then he says, he that endures to the end, the same, tell me, shall be saved. And it is by hearing the word. And believing that word and standing on that word, we endure. I pray you endure to the end in Jesus' name. As we come to the study of today, it's not going to tell us something. Look at verse 7. It says um, in verse 7, that is Second John verse 7, it says, For many deceivers are entered into the world. And then it says, Who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? This is a deceiver and an antichrist. It's telling us that deceivers have come into the world. And because of many deceivers that have come into the world, the truth becomes more essential. You need to understand more of the truth. Because if you don't understand the truth, if you don't have the truth, if you don't appreciate the truth, when those deceivers come, they'll suck you up into their error. They'll suck you up into their deception and their defilement. And so he says, understand. There's a warning here. And watch out. It says, many deceivers have come into the world. In verse 8, it says, look unto yourselves. Look to yourself that you we uh, lose not that which we have done. It says, uh, which we have wrought but that will receive a full reward. Verse 9, it says, whosoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. Think about that. Here is John telling us there are people that do not abide in the doctrine. They worship, they dance, they sing, they give, they attend church services, but they do not abide in the doctrine of Christ. And it says, whosoever, whoever that may be, whatever his title, and whatever the name of the assembly, if they do not abide in the doctrine of Christ, it says he doesn't have God, neither does he have Christ. Then he goes on to say, he that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. Then in verse 10, if there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine receive him not into your house receive him not into your house is that an advice or a commandment tell me out loud a commandment and when you disobey a commandment you commit sin it says receive him not into your house neither be him god's speed for he that bideth him god's speed is partaker of his evil deeds it's not talking about the doctrine that is the doctrine of christ here it reveals the essence of the Christian life. The source of the strength of the life of the believer is the centrality of the doctrine of Christ. It says on this, everything is tested. The doctrine of Christ. It says on this, everything is examined. It says on this, everything is evaluated. It says when people come to you, evaluate the man, examine the man, test the man on the basis of the doctrine of Christ. On this, you test every ministry. On this, you test every man. On this, you test the character of the people. On this, you test their calling. On this, when you test their decision, you even test their discipleship and you test their destiny. That is, you look at people's lives and you know the people that are taking right decision if they abide in the doctrine of Christ. And you look at their ministry, you look at their profession, you look at their teaching, and you look at everything they are, they are doing and you ask yourself, are they abiding in the doctrine of Christ? If they are not abiding in the doctrine of Christ, it says they don't have God. 
they don't have Christ. And they do not have all that you should take for them to get to heaven. The same thing in your own life. You examine the decision you have taken. I've decided to follow Jesus. I'm a child of God. I'm a convert. I'm a member of the church. We are going to examine that profession. And that decision that you say you have taken on the basis of the doctrine of Christ. Your ministry. You say, I have a ministry. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. We examine that on the basis of the doctrine of Christ. Or you might say that you have a mission. That mission we're going to examine. Because it says, if any minister, if any missionary, if any preacher, if any pastor, if any worker, any member, if anybody professing to be a child of God, if he does not abide in the doctrine of Christ, he doesn't have God. And that's the reason why, as we look at it today, the word of God, you're asking yourself, am I abiding? Abiding the word of God? And then we examine every book. We examine every commentary. There are many commentaries that have come, and those commentaries are the ideas and the messages and the doctrines and the teachings of those uh, preachers. And we examine every commentary on the basis of this. If that commentary does not abide in the doctrine of Christ, that means that it's useless, it's worthless. And we examine every book, we examine every tape, everything that people give uh, to you that, and they say, you know, this will help you, that will help you. How do you evaluate them? How do you examine them? How do you test them? How do you know whether this is coming from God? Whether this will help you or not? It says it's on the basis of the doctrine of Christ. You examine them and you weigh them. If you weigh them and they are found wanting, then you throw them away. They become, they are unprofitable to you and they are worthless and they are dangerous and they might damn your soul. That's why tonight we're looking at this study, warning from a loving heart warning from a loving heart. You'll know that John, the beloved, is uh, the apostle of love. And in his love, he wants the people. And in our love, we're studying this as well, and we're giving out the warning, warning from a loving heart. There are three points we're going to look at. Number one, warning against apostles of deception. Apostles of deception. Somebody says, I'm an apostle. You see, an apostle of truth. An apostle of Christ, an apostle that is leading people towards heaven, or is an apostle of deception, an apostle of error, an apostle of false doctrine, an apostle of the flesh, warning against apostles of deception. Number two, watchfulness against adulterations in doctrine. Watchfulness against adulterations in doctrine you might say alterations in doctrine you might say aberrations in doctrine the people that deviate from the doctrine of christ they're still teaching but not the doctrine of christ they're still preaching but not the doctrine of christ and they're still writing but not the doctrine of christ and they're still having radio ministry television ministry internet ministry but it's not the doctrine of christ and the lord is telling us through john the beloved he says we must watch watchfulness again is adulterations in doctrine. We come to number three, the wages of association with deceivers. The wages of associations with deceivers. That is uh, the result of that and what God pays the people, how God judges the people that associate to help, to assist, and to uh, kind of promotes the error of the people. We're coming back to Second John chapter 1, and we're looking at verse 7. It says, For many deceivers are gone, are already entered into the world, who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist there's some preachers that tell us that all they want to do is just preach the word of god they don't want to care about what other people do what other people teach they don't want to leave other people alone they don't want to be found opposing anybody i do mine they do theirs and then whether they're teaching error or not i leave them in the hands of god but john is the apostle of love 
and then he wants us and he tells us and he says many deceivers have gone out into the world what was he telling the people that because the people that have listened to the truth the people that have been born again the people who are following the way of righteousness they might not understand they think that every preacher is sent by god accepted by god every preacher will do well will do good in their life so john said no not at all there are many people that have gone into the world they say they have a ministry and they say they have some teaching but the impact of their teaching the result of their teaching and the uh, the erosion of their teaching into our lives into our families into our conviction will actually be very dangerous because they are antichrist and they're not following the way of the lord and they're not teaching the truth of the word of god they are deceivers and then he calls he says they're deceivers and they are apostles of deception look at this in second corinthians chapter 11 second corinthians chapter 11 and we're reading from verse 13 in second corinthians chapter 11 verse 13 here is what the lord is telling us about uh, these people about the people that do not teach the truth about the people that are teaching error and they are misleading people they may mention born again born again they mention salvation or mention any other thing but the word of god says they lead people astray in second corinthians chapter 11 verse 13 it say for such are false apostles apostles but they are false apostles but they are erroneous apostles but they are misleading apostles but they are deceptive it says for such are false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of christ they'll profess to be apostles of christ and they'll say they're teaching the right thing and they're saying the right thing but then it says and no marvel for satan himself is transformed into an angel of light satan himself pretends to be an angel of life and he reveals some things to some people that's why some people are saying i saw an angel i saw an angel and the light shone around that angel and then that angel told me this and that look at that verse and no marvel for satan himself is transformed into an angel of life then he goes of light then he goes on to verse 15 he says therefore it is no great sin if his ministers that is ministers of satan that is the followers of satan that is those who are working for satan that is those who are preachers for satan and they're preaching doctrines of demons it says therefore it is no great sin if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works according to their works that means then they aren't really preaching the truth and they're not standing on the word of god that will help people that will lift up people that will convert people and that will take them to heaven that's why john is saying the one that's why john is saying realize it's not everybody that comes and he says i'm preaching the truth i'm the apostle of christ and i'm following that which is right and i want to help you not everyone that say uh, says he wants to help it's actually going to be helpful we're looking at first john chapter 2 in first john chapter 2 it tells us in verse 18 here is john see writing about these people and he's saying it's not just one person or two people he said many many deceivers have gone out into the world and these are antichrist these are people that are not following the truth and not leading the people in the right direction in first john chapter 2 we're reading from verse 18 little children is talking to members of the body of christ little children is talking to those who sins have been forgiven little children is talking to the pilgrims and strangers in this world and those on their way to heaven little children members of the of the family of god little children it is the last time and as ye have heard that the antiquist shall come even now at there tell me many antichrists even now are there many antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time that is going to give us the description of those uh, antichrists and when we say antichrist anti that means against antichrist against christ antichrist opposed to christ i'm sure you have heard about some wars that start with anti 
antichrist and then he talks about that anti-christian that is they don't have they don't want to follow the way of christ and the way of the christian there's anti-conversion anti-conversion they don't like to hear that word conversion religion uh-huh they accept that church they accept that ecumenism they accept that unity of all the churches they accept that and then what mentioned real conversion no they are opposed to conversion they say everybody is a christian already i'm baptized i was you know confirmed i take the holy communion that's all they know and so they are anti-christian and there's some people we call them antinomians antinomians nomian norm means the law the right thing the rule means the way of righteousness anti norm anti nomian they against the law of christ all they want to talk about grace 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 everything is grace if they are committing sin and you challenge them grace and if they are doing evil you challenge them grace they are anti-law antinomians and the lord is telling us that anti-christ anti-christian anti-conversion anti-righteousness anti-holiness antinomians they are all the same and they are opposed to christ and they are opposed to conversion and they are opposed to holiness it tells us many antichrists have entered into the world look at verse 19 there it says they went out from us what does that mean? That means at a time they believed in conversion. At a time they believed in holiness. At a time they believed in sanctification. At a time they believed that without holiness no man shall see the Lord. But then they became antichrist, anti-Christian, anti-conversion, anti-holiness. And they went out. They said, no, I don't want all that holiness, holiness. I don't want that anymore. And it says they went out from us. And then he goes on to say but they were not of us for if they had been of us they would no doubt have continued with us but they went out that they might be made manifest that they are not they were not all of us it shows us very clearly then that there are deceivers in the world there are antichrists in the world and you want to be very careful you don't fall into their trap and you want to be careful you are not being taught every sunday and every uh, you know revival time in your local church by somebody who does not accept the truth by a deceiver by someone who does not abide in the doctrine of christ and uh, you know sometimes uh, we have new people in our midst and they just say well i just come to the bible study today because i heard that you know the pastor of deeper life is uh, coming as the senior pastor and so i just came today and i'm going to go back to where i'm coming from if where you are coming from is preaching the truth, that's all right. If where you are coming from is emphasizing salvation and holiness without which no man shall save the Lord, that's all right. But if it's just an assembly of deception, assembly of error, an assembly of false doctrine, I will tell you, like John the beloved will tell you, and like Jesus Christ will tell you, come out from that place and be in a place that believes the Bible, a place that stands on the word of God, a place that will take you to heaven. Heaven. you don't want to waste your life in a place that will take you to hell even jesus christ and uh, want us about uh, these false prophets let's look at matthew chapter 24 in matthew chapter 24 i'm reading from verse 4 matthew chapter 24 and here we're reading from verse 4 and see what jesus christ himself said as to what we ought to do and how we ought to check ourselves in the days in which we're living and look around very well and not just stay conveniently and comfortably in the place where we are without finding out is the doctrine of christ there is the truth of the word of God there? Is this a real apostle? Apostle of holiness? Apostle of righteousness? Apostle of the new birth? Apostle that is teaching me the truth that will take me to heaven? Matthew chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. No man will deceive you. 
and you have not lent your ear to deception in Jesus' name. You know, that there are people, they, 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 are some, they are so sympathetic with others, and they are sympathetic to gamble with their soul. They are sympathetic to gamble with their eternal destiny. They say, you know, I love people. I just appreciate people. And anybody that is talking to me, anybody that is preaching anything to me, I don't want to judge anybody. I don't want to evaluate anybody. I don't want to test anyone. All I know that is uh, if they are teaching, good, good luck to them. Whatever they are teaching, and if I come in their presence and they want to teach me, that's all right. Uh, uh, why did Jesus say that you should take heed and beware that no man deceive you? Look at this in verse 5. For many, is that few or many? Tell me out loud. Many shall come in my name. They don't come in the name of Satan. They don't come in the name of idol. They don't come in the name of another religion. Many shall come in my name. And then it says in that verse 5, saying, I am Christ. They are even bold to say I am Christ. And shall deceive a few people. Many. Look at verse 24 there. In verse 24, here is Jesus still talking. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show what? great signs and wonders. There are people that tell us if the man is not alright, if the man is not preaching the truth, look at all these great signs and wonders. We're not talking of headache being healed. We're not talking of, you know, just a little problem being solved. The man is a great power. And Jesus said that they will show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And then Jesus said in verse 25, behold I have told you before. He's telling us uh, to be watchful. He's warning us that we shouldn't allow any deceiver either by their utterances or by their posture, by their personality or by their various ministries or by the use of internet or by the use of radio or the use of literature or the use of television or the use of any media. Deceive us. It says we should be watchful. Acts of the Apostles. I'm reading from chapter 20. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20. Here is Paul the Apostle. Now, you see, you see all the ministers of God and all the apostles that are warning us. John is warning us. And Jesus Christ has warned us. And now, Paul the Apostle is sounding a note of warning. Look at this in verse, in verse 26. I'm reading from verse 26 of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20. It says, Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. You see, Paul the apostle was faithful to God. I pray you'll be faithful to God. I pray that all our preachers, all our ministers in deeper life will be faithful to God in Jesus' name. To declare the whole counsel of God without fear and without favor. And to declare that confidently. And to declare that clearly. And to declare that with conviction. Then it says in verse 28, Take it therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God. Which he has purchased with his own blood. Verse 29, for I know this. See that. For I know this. This is not guessing. This is what I know. It says, I know this, that after my departing shall grievous woes enter in among you, not sparing the flock, also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Those are false people. They want those disciples to be loyal to them, not loyal to Christ. They want those disciples to be theirs and want to be counting them. How many they have that are totally loyal to them, devoted to them because of money, because of what they will get out of them. Look at verse 29 there. It says, for I know this, that after my departing, after my leaving you, shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock, also of your own selves in Vastachi, shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore, what's the next word? Watch. 
That's warning. It's warning us. It says, my watchful. Don't be careless. Don't throw away your life. Don't just relax and feel there is no danger at all. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone night and day. What's the rest there? With tears. He was so passionate about that. And why are we still studying about this today? Number one, because of the word of God. Number two, because the danger is there today. And at this uh, end of time, the danger will be increasing. And because of increased danger, and because of uh, the situation in which we find ourselves about uh, all these uh, people running up and down and trying to deceive us, that's why we're looking at the word of God and we're saying the word of God has warned us and we want to take a warning in 2 Timothy chapter 3 2 Timothy chapter 3 here we're reading from verse 13. In verse 13 it says, But evil men, those are the deceivers and seducers, those are the people that come to you, they want to deceive you, they want to uh, make you go astray and leave your conviction and leave everything the Lord has planted in your life. It says, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived deceiving they'll be deceiving other people and they themselves are deceived already and it tells us in verse 14 but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of knowing of whom thou has learned them as uh, john the beloved is uh, teaching us and as the spirit of god is emphasizing uh, to us today is telling us that many deceivers uh, would deceive uh, and they create doubt in the minds of people that's how they deceive they know what you know and they know what you have been taught and they know the word of god you are standing on and the first thing they do is that they create doubt do you think that's right do you think that will be true? Do you think that if God is going to wait for only holiness people to get to heaven, do you think many people will get to heaven? Do you think that it is possible to live a life that has no sin? I don't think about that for a whole year and for 10 years and for 20 years. Do you think anybody can do that? They don't think of the grace of God. They're not thinking of the power of God. They're not thinking of the power of the blood of the Lamb that's able to cleanse us. And they're not thinking of the promises giving us a preservation that will keep us faithful until the final day but they try to create doubt in your mind and they weaken the resolve of people that's what the deceiver do they come to you you accept them and then they talk and talk and talk and they will weaken your decision and weaken your resolve and then they defile your mind they'll tell you stories that will defile you and stories and things that will just make you not to be able to stand on what you ought to stand on and eventually they shift your attention away from your focus away from christ and away from your savior away from the redeemer and they get you away from what is essential and they get you to sideline things and non-essential things and things that are not important and they take your life away they take your heart away from the source of strength to destroy your right thinking faculty they'll model up the way you think and they shift your attention away from the word of god and they say think like this and think like this and then they come to control your life and gradually eventually they make you to deny the truth of god little by little by little a drop of water here a drop of water there a drop of an idea there little by little and gradually they make you shift away and finally they damn your soul that's why the lord is telling us and he's saying that we ought to be very careful and we ought to watch so that all these deceivers they will not come to if they come to us they're not going to destroy our lives in jesus name and let's look at titus i'm looking at titus uh, chapter one Titus chapter 1, we're reading from verse 9. In Titus chapter 1, it says, Holding fast the faithful word, as he has been taught. If you have been taught the word of God, you don't play with that, you don't gamble with that, you hold that firm and you hold that fast. Holding fast the word of God, as he has been taught. And then it goes on to say that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers look at verse 10 it says for there are tell me for there are tell me now many unruly and vain talkers 
aunt who are they? The savers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped. If you are listening to them, they keep on talking. If you are giving them attention, they keep on visiting you. If you are smiling when they are telling you about and you know it's error. You know what they are saying is false. I say, I don't want to offend him. I don't want him to feel slighted. I don't want to show that I know too much. Uh -uh. If you know the truth, you must show it. If you know the truth, you must stand by it. But I don't want to offend people. Because you don't want to offend them, you're listening to them. They'll keep on talking. But it says whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses. They're going to confuse your daughter. They're going to confuse your son. They're going to confuse your children. They're going to confuse your wife. Do you see that it's when the men go out to work that these uh, people, they want to sell watchtower. They want to sell this one. They want to sell that. That's when they come in. And those say, uh, we Men, they finish cooking, they finish everything and they are not doing anything. Then they open the door to them and little by little by little, they are confusing. The following day they come again following day, and, they, and the woman will not tell the husband that any watchtower person is coming, will not tell any Sabbatarian is coming, will not tell anybody anything. I was just getting confused and getting confused. One day the woman will just say, I want to go to the other place there. What do you mean? I say I want to go to that assembly, which assembly about the one we have been going and uh, actually i didn't tell you i don't really fully understand and accept everything well for example now we say this and we say this but how about this and the husband will say where did you get that somebody had been coming in and the mouth had not been stopped and now the woman is confused and the woman is influencing the children they subvert whole houses i pray that nobody will take your family to hell it says who subvert whole houses teaching things which they ought not for filthy luther's sake that is for the sake of money look at verse 16 there in verse 16 it says uh, they profess that they know god and uh, they are going to say i'm also born again i'm also a child of god i'm also a believer i'm also going on my way to heaven every church girl is going on their way to heaven that's what they say that's what everybody says but not everyone that calls me lord lord shall enter the kingdom of god but they that do the will of my father who is in heaven look at what it says here it says the profess that they know god but in works they deny him in works they deny him being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate that's why the lord is warning us and that's why the lord is telling us that we must watch we must take care that these people don't bring deception they don't bring error they don't bring damnation into our lives and into our families it tells us in second peter chapter 2 Second Peter chapter 2, I'm reading here from verse 1. In Second Peter chapter 2 verse 1, you see Jesus spoke about this. Paul spoke about this. And John the beloved spoke about this. And Peter is now telling us the same thing. And he says, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately, privately, secretly shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord Jesus the Lord that bought them you see what those uh, people do you'll think that uh, nobody that claims to be a church goer, nobody that claims to be a preacher of the word of God nobody that claims to be a prophet will deceive anybody and deny Jesus Christ openly you'll think that nobody will deny Calvary the cross of Jesus Christ you'll think that nobody will deny the blood of Jesus the blood that cleanses us the blood that converts us and the blood that changes our lives and you're seeing that everybody's singing there's power in the blood power in the blood you think everybody will uphold the power in that blood but it says they even deny the lord that bought them what does that mean it means they were born again before it means they were purchased by the blood of the lamb before it means that they claim to be born again before that bought them and it says they bring upon themselves swift damnation destruction look at verse 2 and many shall follow the pernicious ways if we keep quiet they'll deceive many people if we keep quiet, it will destroy many people. Because it says many shall follow the pernicious ways. By the reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. The way of truth evil spoken of. 
you know, in our country, people are asking us questions. They say there's so many churches and there's so much corruption. And there's so many preachers, there's so much corruption. And there's so many, there are so many houses of worship and houses of fellowship, and there's so much corruption. They tell us there's so, there's so many assemblies, so much corruption. And they tell us every this one is James, and that one is Stephen, and that one is whatever. A Christian name, Christian, Christian everywhere. And yet the corruption is so high because of the people that are teaching false doctrine, and because of people that do not have a converting impact, a sanctifying impact in the life of people that's why religion is there and corruption is there at the same time that's why church is there and corruption is there at the same time and that is why even in the local churches the pastors and the preachers i'm not talking of your own particular local church i'm talking of local churches everywhere we find a lot of evil things and bad things and i pray that our own will be different and your local church will be different in Jesus name. Look at verse 3 there it says and through covetousness shall they with fain wars uh, make merchandise of you. Through covetousness. I want you to think about all the things to see. All the handbills you see. All the posters you see. All the billboards you see. Come to this meeting. Come to this assembly. Come to this night vigil. Come to this. Come to this. Everything is based on you'll get more money. You'll become rich. You are going to have this. You are going to have that. And it is based on the love for money. It's based on covetousness. And that's why we need to be very careful. And you need to watch your own heart. That when you have all this talking about covetousness, love of money, you'll get this, you'll get that. And then you abandon the Bible study. You abandon the word of God. You abandon the thing that will help you to think about heaven and go to heaven. That's why it says, it says through covetousness shall they with faint words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not. Are they going to face judgment? I said, are those deceivers going to face judgment? Yes, they're going to face judgment. And then he goes on to say, and their damnation lingereth not. Their damnation lingereth not. Look at uh, verse 17. In verse 17 it says, they are wells without water. Clouds that are carried with a tempest, in whom or to whom the blackness of darkness is reserved forever. And you see what the Lord is telling us through the apostle. He's saying that uh, these uh, people, their damnation is sure. Their condemnation is sure. Their doom is sure. It says they're going to suffer in hellfire forever. And that punishment eternal is reserved for them. In verse 18, it tells us, For when they speak great swelling words of vanity. Great swelling words of vanity. It says, that's all they are speaking. All those words you are hearing from them. All those high sounding words you are hearing from them. It says, they're great words of vanity. Swelling words of vanity. It says, they are law. They entice. They draw through the lust of the flesh. And through much wantonness, those that are clean escaped from, from them who live in error, while they promise them liberty. That's what they do. In all those uh, write-ups and all those handbills and all those posters and all the internet and all the television uh, announcement, uh, they promise quite a lot of things. They promise liberty. They themselves are servants of uh, corruption. And for of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. For if after they have escaped from the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse for them than the beginning. That's what the Lord is warning us and that's what the Lord is saying. We should not be enticed, we should not be deceived, and we should not go in the way of 
error. We're looking at a Jude, Jude has only one chapter. In Jude, we're looking at verse 20. What the Lord wants you to do, that you'll keep the experience the Lord has given you, and you will keep uh, all the conviction that has been built over the years in your life by studying the word of God. That you will keep your Christian experience. You are born again. What a good Christian experience. You are sanctified. What a great Christian experience. You are baptized in the Holy Ghost. And what an experience is that? That you'll keep everything. Look at verse 20 of Jude. It says, But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. I pray none of us hearing the word of God here consistently, none of us will be lost in Jesus' name. And the truth the Lord is teaching us, and the truth is emphasizing in our lives. This truth will see us through to the very end in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number two now. Point number two, watchfulness against adulterations in doctrine. Watchfulness against adulterations in doctrine. We're looking at Second John. I'm reading from verse 9. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. Whosoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. How do you know counterfeit if you don't know the genuine and the truth? Let's say you've not never seen a dollar bill ten dollar bill or hundred dollar bill or whatever you've never seen the genuine thing you've never seen the real thing and then somebody gives you a kind of uh, you know adulterated a dollar counterfeit dollar you're not going to recognize because you do not know what is the real thing you've never seen a pound a pound sterling you've never seen ten uh, pound uh, denomination you've never seen anything like that and then somebody gives you counterfeit you'll not be able to tell it is when you're familiar with the doctrine of Christ. You will know that this person coming is not bringing the doctrine of Christ. But if you don't know the doctrine of Christ and they just say that you know whoever comes and doesn't bring the doctrine of Christ he doesn't have God. You don't know. You don't understand. So you must understand what is the doctrine of Christ. What is the teaching of Christ. What are the things that Jesus taught and he said we should go out and teach all nations and then he says we should should make them observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Now, what's the doctrine of Christ? Number one is the atonement. Is the atonement? He said, "This is my blood, which is shed for many, so that through that blood you have remission of sin, forgiveness of sin." Number two, we have the baptism because it tells us as we go, we we'll preach the gospel to every creature, and those who believe, they are baptized in water. Then it says, "The same." It says, "There's." A that kind of baptism it says for John truly baptized with water but she shall be baptized with what the Holy Ghost on fire and it says wait in Jerusalem because you will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria to the utmost part of the earth. It's not only talking about atonement and it's teaching his doctrine not only about baptism, he spoke about conversion, conversion he said except a man be converted and become like a little child he cannot see the kingdom of God. He talked about cross bearing it says anyone that follows me he must bear the cross and follow me it says if you're not bearing the cross if you're dodging the cross if, if you don't have self-denial and then you abandon the cross it says you might go to church you might treat the bible but you are none of mine it talks about discipleship discipleship it says if you love father or mother more than me you're not worthy of me and it says if you don't notice the word of god learn the word of god and you continue in them those who continue in the word of god they are the disciples of the lord indeed it talks about eternal life eternal life and if you don't know the doctrine that he spoke about if you don't know what he taught how are you going to know somebody comes to you and does not bring the doctrine of christ the doctrine of christ doctrine of eternal life and his doctrine of enduring to the end it says because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold but it says they that endure to the end the same shall be saved it spoke about faith 
faith because he said except you believe that i am he you will die in your sin he spoke about faithfulness that those who are faithful in little things they be faithful too in little things and then on the final day he'll say come in good and faithful servant you've been faithful in a few things inherit the kingdom prepared for you he talks about fruit bearing he says we ought to bear fruit he says any branch in me that beareth no fruit god the father will take away and he spoke about god and he said with god all things are possible all things are possible he says what man this is impossible man cannot do this man cannot achieve this but with god all things are possible he speak about grace the grace of god he talk about the gospel as well and then he talks about glory he's coming in his glory you will learn everything the lord has said so once you know what the lord has said if anybody then comes and is bringing another thing opposed to what christ said bringing another thing against what christ said you know uh, that's the one the bible is talking about because it's opposing christ he spoke about heaven the dwelling place of god dwelling place of angels and the dwelling place of the saints the people that die in the lord and he spoke about hell the dwelling place of satan and the dwelling place of fallen angels and the dwelling place of unrepentant sinners he spoke about iniquity abounding he said in the last days when perilous times shall come that's the language of paul the apostle he said iniquity shall abound and because of iniquity abounding the love of many shall wash cold do you remember jesus spoke about judgment he said on the day of judgment it will be more tolerable for sodom and gomorrah than for these big places where he had preached the word of god and yet they are not yielding to the word of the lord and he said that final day of judgment will come because they'll hear the voice of the son of man and all those who hear they will rise up and those who have done good they will go to uh, the good side they'll go to heaven eternal life and those who have done evil they will go to eternal punishment it talks about keeping the word of god it says you profess to love me keep my words keep my word it says this is the reason i will know that you are my disciples if you are keeping my words it spoke about love loving god with all your heart all your soul and all your mind and loving your neighbor as yourself and loving the believers as i have loved you those are the doctrines of christ and that's why john is saying do you know the doctrine of christ do you know what he taught and do you know what jesus christ emphasized when he was say if anybody comes to you and he does not bring this the doctrine of christ he does not have god he spoke about marriage what do you say about marriage you say from the being god made them male and female one man one woman and he says and the two shall become one and he says it is until death do you part and he spoke about out his name he said he gave us his name he says this is the name you have never had ask anything in my name but ask and i will give unto you he said if you believe in me this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils not in the name of angel if anybody comes to you then and the lord jesus christ has given us his name the authority of his name the power of his name and then somebody is coming is mentioning this angel and that angel or somebody is mentioning the founder of their church they pray in the name of the founder of their church and they carry the picture only but you know that is false and you know that that's what the lord is telling us that anybody that comes and you do not bring this doctrine you not receive them he talks about i and my father are one i and my father one he said they are one the father god in heaven and he himself god the son he spoke about purity of heart blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god talks about our preaching the gospel going into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he spoke about prayer and he says men ought to pray and not to faint you look at the doctrine of christ you look at what he emphasized and you look at what he wants the impact he wants in your life with all the doctrine of christ and then you are walking straight you are living straight anybody then comes and they do not bring the doctrine of christ you say uh -uh, this cannot be right do you know jesus spoke about quick reconciliation when you bring your gift to the altar 
And you remember that somebody has something against you. It says you leave your gift at the altar. Don't just say, I'm here to sing, I'm here to worship, I'm here to do this and that. It says leave your gift there and quickly go and reconcile with the adversary. It says do that immediately. Quick reconciliation. He spoke about repentance and he said this word of repentance will preach in all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Spoke about righteousness. Except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of scribes and Pharisees. Ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of God. And he spoke about resurrection. Resurrection. That the final day is coming. The dead in Christ shall rise. And the people that have done good, the people do are saved, they'll enter into heaven, and the others they'll enter into eternal service. He's talked about reward. He said, My reward is with me, and I will give to everyone as his work shall be. He spoke about salvation. In fact, the Bible says that you'll call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. He spoke about the scripture. And said the scripture cannot be broken. He said from the time, you know, Moses and the law and the prophets and the Psalms. And then the New Testament, everything spoke about the scripture. And he says, hold that fast. Don't allow anybody to take that away from you. And he says, sanctify them. Through thy truth, thy word is truth. He spoke about our treasure in heaven. Lay not your treasure here on earth. But lay your treasure in heaven where moth and rust cannot corrupt. He spoke about the fact that temptation will come. But that you know that you are weak. Therefore you pray. You watch and pray. Lest you fall into temptation. And then he spoke about his coming. And he said when he comes. After he comes. And takes the church away. He said for there shall be great tribulation. There will be tribulation. And see there are people. They don't know the doctrine of Christ. They don't know what he taught. And then if we just say. If anybody comes to you and abides not in the doctrine of Christ. What's the doctrine of Christ? How do I recognize that this fellow that is coming now. Is not bringing the doctrine of Christ. This book I'm reading is not bringing the doctrine of Christ. This commentary is not bringing the doctrine of Christ. This television proclaimer prophet is not bringing the doctrine of Christ. That handbill that I see and the thing I hear from the loudspeaker, how do I know they're not preaching the doctrine of Christ? You will know the doctrine of Christ and then that will help you to be able to tell this is not the doctrine of Christ. It talks about the understanding of the word word being necessary and being important. It says when anybody hears the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then the birds of the air, Satan will come and take everything away. It's telling us that it's not just that I come to the study, um, you know, listening to the Bible and then after you, after we you didn't understand anything, no conversion, there's nothing at all and then you go away. It says we must understand. That's why he opened their eyes to understand the scriptures and then it talks about the virgins, the wise virgins who are getting ready and getting prepared to get to heaven and then he talks about walking in the light he says all the people that follow me they will not walk in darkness they will walk in the light he talks about witnessing that he says that he shall receive power after the holy ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me that's evangelism that's soul winning and he gives us that responsibility he talks about his yoke you take my yoke yoke upon you and it's the yoke of companionship come walk with me that's the yoke and it's the yoke of conformity you are conformed you look at his life and then you make your life to match it's the yoke of conformity and the yoke of control it brings this yoke upon your life and then it says as many as i love i rebuke therefore be zealous and repent. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. You look at the word of Christ, the doctrine of Christ, and then what John said then becomes meaningful unto you. Let's come back to Second John. Second John, I'm reading from that verse 9. It says, Whosoever, whosoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. Doctrine of Christ, what he taught. What he emphasized and what he's teaching us, the words of Christ. It says, Whosoever there comes to you and does not abide in that which Christ has taught 
as not God. And look at that, the second part of that verse, it says, uh, he that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you, if there come any, you're not going to say, I respect him. It's my boss, or his preaching error. It's going to a place where they emphasize error. It's my helper. It's my director. Or maybe it's your husband. And your husband is saying, you know, I don't believe this now. This is what I believe. And you are my wife. And therefore, we must go together. Uh -uh. Going to heaven is a personal choice. Am I right? And so you say, my husband, I don't want you to go into this. Can, this is error. Look at the word of God. This is not the doctrine of Christ. And if he still says he's bent on going his own way, you say, I'm sorry. I'm not going to give up my conviction because you are going into error. That's why it says, if any come unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God's speech. Uh, let's look at the warnings of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 16. In Matthew chapter 16, I'm reading here from verse 12. Matthew chapter 16, and we're looking at verse 12. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 12, the words of Jesus Christ, the warning he gave that we should be watchful. Here is it. It says, Then understood they. How he bid them not to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. To beware of the doctrine of the Pharisees and also of the Sadducees. It tells us in Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 7. Mark chapter 7 verse 7, it says, How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. Teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. It makes a difference between the doctrine of Christ and the doctrines of men, tradition of men. Look at verse 8, for laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men tradition of men. If anybody comes to you and does not bring the doctrine of Christ and is bring tradition of men, that's what the Lord is saying. He says, who should abandon them. Look at verse 13. Making voyage the word of, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition which ye have delivered and many such things ye do or do ye. We're looking at John chapter 7. John chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 16. John chapter 7, we're reading from verse 16 here. In verse 16, it says, Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. The doctrine of Christ is the doctrine of God. It's what the Father has told him and taught him. And then he gave that out. And that's what God had promised. He said, I'll raise up a prophet like Moses. And then I'll put my word in his mouth. And whosoever shall not listen to him. Whosoever shall not hearken unto him. Whosoever shall not obey him. Whosoever will not take the words of Christ. And the doctrine of Christ to heart. Whosoever will then drift away into another sin. It says, him will I cut off. That's why the Lord is saying here, the word that we hear, the doctrine of Christ does not belong to him. It belongs to the Father. Look at verse 17. It says, if any, if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. We're looking at uh, First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. Take heed unto yourself, unto thyself, and unto the doctrine. You see that? Watch over that doctrine. Believe the doctrine. Accept the doctrine. Match your life with the doctrine. 
Let that doctrine influence your life, transform your life, change your life, and take heed to that, that you accept it fully, and then you pass it on to other people as well. It says, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. I read from verse 1, Titus chapter 2, verse 1. But speak thou the things which become, which befit sound doctrine. Verse 7. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine and showing uncorruptness, gravity, and sincerity. And then in that same uh, chapter 2, we're looking at verse 10. Not for loining, but showing all good fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of God and our Savior in all things. And so you understand what the Lord wants us to do and what he wants us to be. And I wants us to hold on to the doctrine of the word of God, the doctrine of Christ. And be watchful and watch over all that God has taught us and let that word be the foundation of every one of our lives. So we're coming back to Second John and we're coming to verse 11. Second John verse 11. It says, For he that bideth him God's speech is partaker of his evil deed. Let's read it from verse 10. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God's speech. For he that bideth him God's speech, tell me, Partaker is partaker of his evil deeds. You see that if you're a real Christian, you take the word of God at face value. If you're a real Christian, you are born again. What the Lord has said, that's what you, that's what you stay by. And you're not going to give any excuse. I'm doing this because of that. When the Lord has said very clearly that if anyone brings not this doctrine, you'll not receive him to your house. And you'll not encourage him. You'll not bid him God's speed. We're looking at Second Chronicles chapter 19. Second Chronicles, we're looking at chapter 19. And we're reading here from verse 2. Second Chronicles chapter 19, verse 2. And you see how serious this matter is. Those who bid erroneous people, deceptive people, false prophets, those who bid them Godspeed. In verse 2 it says, And Jehu, the son of Ananiah, the seer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly? Shouldest thou help the ungodly? And love them that hate the Lord? Should you support people that hate the Lord? Those who are antichrists? Those who are deceivers, those who are not standing on the word of God, it says, therefore, because of lending help, lending hand, because of supporting that evil personality, it says, therefore, uh, the raw is wrath upon you from before the Lord. That's the warning of the Lord telling us that we shouldn't be partaker of their evil deed. Jeremiah chapter 23. In Jeremiah chapter 23, we're reading from verse 14. Jeremiah chapter 23, reading from verse 14. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem an horrible sin. They commit adultery. And they walk in lies, and they strengthen also the hands of evil doers. They strengthen the hands of evil doers. They encourage evil doers. They support evil doers. They promote evil doers. They finance evil doers. You see, this is the word of God, and God said it was against these people because of that. It says uh, that none does return from his wickedness. 
There's no repentance in many churches anymore because uh, the people preaching, uh, the first prophet, the first preachers, nobody is talking about repentance. Nobody is talking about conversion. And it says because of this, they are strengthening the hands of thieves. They are strengthening the hands of violent people and are strengthening the hands of the people that are living in sin and they keep on living in their sin once they are bringing their tithes and offering. And it says, They are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. And I say, Why the Lord is beckoning on us that we will not join them. We will not join them in Jesus' name. We we'll stand by the word of God. We we'll live by the word of God. And the people that are perpetrating error, they will not have our support. They will not have our finance. And they will not have our cooperation in Jesus' name. Ezekiel chapter 13. Ezekiel. I'm reading from chapter 13 here. And I'm reading from verse 22. Ezekiel chapter 13. You see how serious it is. In the sight of the Lord for you to help a deceiver. I've heard to finance a deceiver. It says because. This is Ezekiel chapter 13 verse 22. Because what lies have damaged the heart of the righteous sage. Whom I have not made such, and strengthened the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. Promising him life. All these uh, preachers, you know, they, they tell all these thieves and all the corrupt people, I promise them life and say, you know, God loves everybody. The grace of God is there. This one is there. That one is there. And God says, I'm against them. All they want to do is just get the money from those business people and encourage them in their evil, fraudulent uh, business practices. And they never tell them. Nobody is talking about repentance. Nobody is talking about restitution. Nobody is talking about righteousness and uprightness and it says all those preachers that are deceiving all the businessmen that they will share in their calamity in their doom and in their damnation as well ezekiel chapter 32 here we're looking at verse 21 ezekiel chapter 32 reading from verse 21 the word of the lord is uh, very clear and very plain in verse uh, 21 of ezekiel chapter 32 it says the strong among the mighty shall speak to him out of the midst of hell with them that help him out of the midst of hell the strong and the mighty you didn't tell me you didn't want me. They'll speak to those people in hell. You let me in my deception. You let me in my error. Because you are getting advantage, some advantage from what I was doing. And then it says, uh, they are gone down. And uh, then he was the uncircumcised. They are slain by the sword. The warning of the Lord is coming to us that if we know those who are perpetrating error, false doctrine, deception, will not join them. If we cannot uh, convince them to stop what they are doing, at least we avoid them uh, and we are not financing them, we are not helping them uh, to do more evil. Because we are told in Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Those who have the truth, they know the truth, but they hold it in unrighteousness. And they're helping people and supporting people who are righteous. Look at verse 32. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do them what's the lord telling us the lord is telling us that god's wrath god's indignation and god's eternal punishment will be for those who age and abet thieves and corrupt people and you know all this investigation going on in our country corruption here corruption there corruption there uh, if there are people that aided them they might not have been discovered the people that are better it says the judgment of god will be upon them the people who are seized 
Antichrist, the people who are seized, Antinomians, and the people who are seized, the false prophets. You know, they're preaching false doctrine. And then you're assisting them, you're encouraging them, or you're doing something, you know, with them. You say, I don't accept what he does. I don't accept everything he does. I don't believe everything he does. But you know, somebody will help him, and you are the person to help him and to propagate error. The people who are helping deceivers to defile the believers and to destroy the believers they will share in the judgment that god is going to bring upon those deceivers those so can you imagine have you had the name hitler before i said have you had the name hitler before okay and there were people that helped him with strategy and told him about the history of the jews about this and that and all those people that gave strategy to hitler to destroy the Jews as a judgment is coming upon the destroyer. The people that gave him strategy to do that and supported him, judgment you will come. And the same thing, if you know there are people, he wants to hurt Christian, he wants to destroy Christian, he wants to make a saint fall, he wants to defy the saint, he wants to do evil to a saint. And then you know, and you are the one to help, you are the one to give information, you are the one to give the strategy as the judgment of God comes upon those destroyers the judgment of god will come to you too and the people that finance for poor prophets and the people that help them one way or the other and they become antagonistic to the gospel and you are giving them how to package their error how to package their book how to package their music how to package and you know they're preaching error but you say so that this will be acceptable then you package it for them as the judgment of god comes upon them them because they mislead souls into error and into hell the judgment of god will come upon you too but there's repentance today and i pray god will help you to repent in jesus name those who run errands for sin partners this man has a wife there's a concubine outside you know that is wrong. And then you are the one to run errands for them and take this note to the concubine and then bring information from concubine onto them. And then you are aiding and abetting all the evil they're doing. When the judgment of God comes upon them, you have the judgment you. They are, they are celebrating the you know ceremony of second wife, of third wife, of you know polygamous and something. And you are the one to go there and you are the one to do this and do that and support them. That's what the Lord is saying here that anyone that hates error, anyone that supports evil, that the judgment of God will come upon the people perpetrating error and the judgment will come upon the one that is aiding, abetting and helping. I will not be there. And you see, that's why we made it very thorough and very plain so that as you come before the Lord today, you say, Lord, I didn't know this. I didn't know this. I didn't know that. Now that I know, I will no more do those evil things anymore in Jesus' name. We're coming now. We're coming now to Second John. We're coming to Second John. And you see what the Lord has taught us today and what John has emphasized for you and for me today so that our lives will be clear. Our lives will be clean. Our hands will not be in evil in Jesus' name. It says, for many deceivers are entered into the world. And then it says, who confess not that Jesus is come in the flesh. This is the deceiver. is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ as not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son, if they are come any unto you. And bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house. You will not. I said you will not receive them. Neither bid him Godspeed. You will not encourage them. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deed. I will not be a partaker of the evil of anybody. I will not be a partaker with deceivers. I will not be a partaker with Antichrist. 
You're on your way to heaven. Keep your eyes on Christ. Keep your eyes on the doctrine of Christ. And whatever error may be floating around your community, say, my hands are not there. I'm not going to give any support to any evil. And when the trumpet shall sound, I pray the Lord will keep you faithful until that final day in Jesus' name. Let's rest up and talk to the Lord in prayer. That the Lord will help you to be faithful to his word. This is something we need to obey. This is something we need to actually repent if we are being uh, doing evil in any way. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Do you believe in the doctrines of Christ? Atonement? Is baptism? Do you believe that? The conversion you spoke about. Do you believe that? Discipleship. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. You believe that? Eternal life. And that you hold on to the word of God and endure to the very end. Faith. Without faith, we cannot please God. Faithfulness. You are faithful to the word that he has taught us. Do you believe that? Fruit bearing. Any branch in me that beareth no fruit, he taketh away. The one that bears fruit, he purges. Do you believe in God? He said, with God, all things are possible. What's impossible with men is possible with God. Do you believe that? The grace and the truth that it brings into our lives. Do you believe that? More grace, more grace, more grace that he gives. He spoke about heaven. My father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. But it will be pure in heart before you can get there. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. He spoke about hell, where the worm dies not, and the fire is not quenched. Check up your life. Do you accept sound doctrine? Do you believe sound doctrine? Do you hold on to sound doctrine? Or are you just floating here and there? The church you go, the assembly you go. Do they emphasize sound doctrine, the doctrines of Christ? Or are you just there? Are you gambling with your soul? Where will you spend eternity? Iniquity is abounding today. And the love of many waxing cold. Is your love cold? I want you to study the Bible. Too much Bible, too much Bible, too much Bible. You don't love that? Iniquity is taking over your life. He wants us to endure to the very end. He spoke about the day of judgment coming. That's a sad day coming. A sad day coming. When the sinners will hear the word depart from me. I know you not. Where will you be on that day? So you shall keep his word. If you love me, keep my commandments. If a man say I love God and does not keep the commandment of God is a liar. The truth of God does not abide in him. It reminds us to love God with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, all our strength. And to love God more than anything on earth, anyone on earth. And to love the brethren as Christ has loved us. Pure love, fervent love, no sexuality, no adultery, no fornication. Love. Fervent and pure and righteous. Say so we shall love our neighbors as ourselves, not to curse them, not to wish that they die. Are you abiding in the doctrine of Christ? Or, or you are the one wanting your enemy to die? Love your enemies, he said. That's the doctrine of Christ. Doctrine of Christ of marriage. I your marriage. One man, one wife, until death do you part. And the two shall become one flesh. No divorce and remarriage. In the doctrine of Christ. He has given us his name. And he said, whatsoever you ask in that name, according to his promises, he will answer, I and my father are one. You accept that? You believe that? Quick reconciliation. You have anything against your brother? Quickly reconcile. Anything against a member of the church, quickly reconcile. And not just keep on offering worship and service. 
that is worthless in the sight of God. Leave your gift at the altar and go quickly and reconcile with him, with her. Do you say believe righteousness, repentance, restitution, doctrine of Christ, salvation, sanctification, the whole scripture? Scripture cannot be broken. You don't reject any part of scripture. The fullness of the revelation of God in the scriptures. Do you resist temptation or whatever temptation comes to you? Just yield and bend. Watch and pray that you do not fall into temptation. Are you laying your treasure in heaven? Are you laying your treasure here on earth? Do you even fear going to heaven? Are you getting ready to go in the rapture so as to escape the great tribulation? Do you make effort to understand the scriptures? When you hear the word, apply them in your heart. Understand the scriptures so that Satan does not come and take everything away. Are you preparing like the wise virgins? You trim your lamp, your lamp is burning. And you have the extra oil so that you will keep on watching ready until he comes are you watchful or careless do you take the warnings of scripture or you throw them over your shoulders watch for the hour you know not the son of man cometh. take my yoke upon you learn of me my yoke is easy and my body is light. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasing. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Prepare to meet the Lord your God.